In this example, we're going to work with probability density function of a random vector. The random vector we're going to work with is x, and we are told that the probability density function for this random vector looks like the following. It's 1 over 2 pi to the n over 2 times all these sigmas, e to the minus a half, and then this summation term right here. So this is the probability density function of the vector, and we can tell that this is an n-dimensional vector because there are n sigmas right here, so this random vector has n entries. Each entry itself is a random variable, and what we are going to do is we are going to find the probability density function of just one of these random variables. We want to compute the probability density function of the random variable xi, so we want to know the density function of the ith coordinate of the random vector x. So how can we do that? So this is just the ith element of the random vector x. So first of all, let's write this in a little bit different way that will help us. Instead of writing the density function in the first given form, we can rewrite it like this. It's really just a product of 1 over 2 pi sigma 1 times an exponential, 1 over 2 pi sigma 2 times an exponential, actually factors into all these different pieces where all the x1s are right here, all the x2s are right here, dot dot dot, all the xn's are right here. So we can actually write the probability density function of the random vector in that form, which I think is useful. And then we can compute the marginal density function of xi by just integrating out the dimensions that we don't want. So since we're interested in the ith dimension, we're going to integrate the first and the second and the third and the i minus 1 and the i plus 1, all the dimensions that aren't i, we're going to integrate those out to get to the marginal density function that we want. So let's go ahead and do that. We can compute the density function of the random variable xi by just performing n minus 1 integrations. So that's what I've done right here. These first integrals right here go from 1 to i minus 1. And then these right here go from i plus 1 all the way up to n. And you can tell that right here in the notation, too, with the dx's. It's dx1, dx2, all the way up to x of i minus 1. Then we skip the ith dimension, and then we go i plus 1 all the way up to the nth dimension. So this really is a collection of n minus 1 integrals that are integrating everything except the ith dimension. So we're going to integrate out all the dimensions we don't want to get this marginal density function. So let's actually go ahead and write that out. So I can pull out the ith part of this function, right, because it's a constant with respect to all these integrals, so I've pulled that out of the integral. And then what I'm left with are a whole bunch of integrals that look like this. Here's an integral over x1, and I have to multiply that by the integral over x2. So it looks like this, and then I have to multiply that by, and I just keep going until I get to i minus 1, and I multiply that by the integral over the dimension i plus 1, and I keep going, I have to multiply that by the integral all the way up to the nth integral. So we've actually very explicitly and very tediously written out all n minus 1 integrals that we need to do. So we need to do a whole bunch of integrals, but these integrals are actually pretty easy because if you look at this, all we have right here in this integral is 1. This is just a Gaussian density function that is being integrated from minus infinity to infinity. This is x1 is just a Gaussian random variable with mean 0 and variance sigma 1 squared. So this integral just is 1. Same thing for this integral over dx2. This integral is just 1, and this integral is just 1, and this integral is just 1, and this integral is just 1. So when we're all said and done, after we integrate all this out, we are left with just 1 over 2 pi sigma i e to the minus xi squared over 2 sigma i squared. So by looking at this, we can tell that xi is a Gaussian random variable with mean of 0 and variance sigma i squared. So this is kind of obvious from the starting point. We could tell based on what we were given, that our density function for our vector, random vector, factored out nicely. We kind of see that, but we've actually gone through kind of the tedious part of actually doing the real computation of taking our density function and integrating over every unwanted dimension to yield the marginal density that we were looking for.